Hey, Python bros, let's learn how to forecast cohorted lifetime value for a game. Let's aggregate all of our revenue progression per install date, and let's take as little as four days of revenue and extrapolate that all the way to day 180 or day 360. Let's figure out how to tell if we're gonna break even very, very early on in our investment. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how. A while back, I showed you how to forecast game retention data using power law curves. Today, we're gonna build on that topic. Let's switch it up. This time, we're gonna use a logarithmic function. Oh yeah! For libraries and dependencies, we aren't doing anything new. We have some NumPy, Pandas, SciPy optimized so we can access the curve fit method and then let's skip warning because we are going to be getting a fair deal of those. My sample data is formatted in the following way. I have a age column showing me how old this cohort is. I have an install date for the cohort. And then I have how much revenue this cohort made on the respective day we have on their first day day zero on their second day day one and etc all the way up to day 180. let's break it down a bit more it's important to understand what we're looking at so that you can repurpose it for your own needs this example comes from mobile gaming we have a cohort that installed on the 1st of April, and I have captured that cohort's revenue progression. That means all players that installed on the 1st of April made this much revenue on the same day, and then on the next day, which is the 2nd of April, the same cohort made this much amount of money. This is how we form our cohort revenue progression line. Usually it's either logarithmic or exponential. We have a burst of revenue at the start and then as less players are playing, it levels out. This revenue is cumulative in nature. That means that every subsequent value is larger or equal to the previous one. It's important to note that once we reach the age of our cohort, this value remains the same to the end. We're gonna write a model that learns from the growth of the limited data that we give it and extrapolates that up to day 180 or day 360. That way you're gonna be able to forecast your cohorts revenue and essentially figure out if you're gonna break even. It's a very simple yet very powerful approach. Let me teach you how to do it. We're gonna start off by writing our logarithmic function. We're gonna model our revenue decay with it. That means our growth in the start will not be the same as our growth throughout the time series, otherwise known as the cohort's lifetime. Since we want to have a programmatic way to reuse this code, we're gonna code out a couple of key assumptions. We're gonna do our prefix for our column, all of my columns have this prefix, but you may have a different one. We're gonna create a variable for the age. That way we can check if our cohort has aged enough to take this row of data. If our age is five or less, we can't use day six. It's gonna be the same value as the previous one. And it's gonna trick our model and we don't want that. I have prediction day here at 90, but you can change it to 180 or even 360 if you so choose. We're gonna initialize a list for our predicted values and also for our rows with warnings. It's possible for our model to receive too few data or data which confuses it and it cannot converge to properly find a curve. That shouldn't happen too much, but we'd still like to be informed if it does. Since we're interested in each row as a separate data point, we're gonna have to employ some dark magic and iterate over some data frame rows. A generally bad idea, but give me the benefit of the doubt. Let's create our core loop.
we're gonna create a loop that goes through every row and outputs our data in separate arrays. That way we can have a separate model for every single date, which is a separate row in our data frame. Let's go ahead and code out our logic. So what does this do? We store our age. Next, we use a list comprehension to make sure that our columns are aged enough to be included in this row's basic progression data. So that if we have a cohort that has an age of five days, we don't include any columns that are after day five. We create one final list and we store our values in the Y values variable. Bam, this works pretty fast, but what does it do? If we call our Y values, it's gonna give us an array of our last data frame row. So we need to nest another logic within this logic. Stay with me a little longer. I know it's getting complicated, but it will make sense very soon. Our first nested loop is gonna just check if we have more than three values in our array. Why? Well, typically because if you give it just one, it doesn't have any progression to extrapolate. If you give it just two, the difference between the first and second value is usually the biggest. And at three, it starts to pick up the pattern. The logistic regression is gonna add decay and you're actually gonna have a semblance of a curve. The more data, the better. And we're actually gonna dynamically feed more data as our cohorts age readjusting our forecast to be as accurate as possible based on the maximum amount of data that we have. Pretty awesome, right? We're gonna have three variables that are gonna help our function fit the model. We're gonna have A, which is gonna be our first value, B, which is gonna be the difference between last and first value over the log of our, of our length of data, essentially approximating what our curve slope is gonna be like. And then for C, we're just gonna put one. If we go back to our function, we're gonna see it takes a fourth variable, X. That is our day that we're gonna be forecasting. It can be values from one to 360. Now comes the hard part, the meat of our function. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna write a error handling logic. There are cases where our model may not find a function. And instead of just letting it do whatever it wants, we'd like to be informed when that happens. We're gonna put our warnings to always, and then we're gonna continue to fit every row in our data frame into our curve fit function. We are calling the curve fit function. We're passing our logarithmic function as our first argument. Our X is essentially days to include. From the loop, we have our Y values. We're putting a very large number for the amount of iterations the model can do before it times out. Then we have a warm guesses for our other three variables. And we're putting some standard bounds to avoid weird values. And that's pretty much it. If there are no errors, just give us the values. If there are some errors, put them in our list of rows with errors. Very straightforward, super easy to do. We then call our log function. We ask it to use the day that we'd like to predict. And we fit the parameters from the curve we just trained. In essence, we're creating a model on every row of our data frame and asking it to forecast a date in the future that we specify. This is how we're gonna get a column with forecasts at the end in our data frame. Now that we feel comfortable with what we're doing, let's combine it all in one big class that we can use to predict our future lifetime value. Just like this. Feel free to follow the link into the description and get this class for free and use it however you may choose to. Let's initialize our model, fit our data frame, and see if we have any rows with warnings. And we do not. That's awesome. If we call our df with predictions, 
we're gonna see that for every row of data, we have day 180 predicted. That means our model took every relevant day and extrapolated all the way to day 180, giving us a forecast. Since none of our cohorts have aged to day 180, let's drop some columns, set our model to predict day 90, and try to figure out how accurate it is. If we go ahead and do that, we're gonna see that our predicted values match our underlying data pretty good. We have a mean absolute percent error of under 2%. Pretty acceptable. It's important to note that it's very easy for this model to extrapolate day 90 data just because it's taking data up until day 60. And forecasting the last 30 days is easier than forecasting a whole year based on the first seven days. So keep that in mind. The less data you feed it, the less accurate this approach is going to be. All right, Python bros. Thanks for watching. I hope you managed to learn something new. And if you're able to use this in your job or studies or generally on a project, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the Python Bobby channel. That will mean the world to me. Thank you very much. Stay Gucci. And until next time. Hell yeah.